This is our news, the weekend edition, and on the broadcast tonight. The homicide rate is down, and we'll tell you about one program government hopes will help to reduce those figures even more. Plus, predicting a huge loss. The opposition's deputy leader questions government's word on potential buyers for the Grand Lucayan Resort. And a foundation to remember the legacy of gospel singer Lyrically Blessed. news is brought to you by Alive. Best. Good evening, I'm Andrew Knowles and thanks so much for joining us. Topping the news, the Inter-American Development Bank's funded Citizen Security Justice Program aims to reduce the levels of crime and violence in the country, as well as enhance security and justice, with statistics showing a 36% reduction in murders so far for 2018. Our Jared Higgs tells us program coordinators are hoping the use of youth centers will contribute to a further drop in those figures. We're looking at transformation of not just people, but minds. Dr. Rochelle Lightborn is the Component 1 coordinator for the Citizen Security Justice Program. She's tasked with executing social crime and violence prevention objectives that include training at-risk youth and school-based violence prevention. There's also a violence interrupters component where persons are going to be identified within hotspot areas to interrupt violence before it happens. Again, we're back to the prevention aspect. Once that has happened, there's a caseworker that works with that person, we're back to transformation. So the component one is looking at all those non-violent uh, strategies, initiatives, programs, modalities, so that we cannot see the increase of violence and crime in the country. The stage one rollout corresponds with a 36% decrease in murders in the first 10 months of 2018 compared to the same period last year. On November 1st, 2017, there were 116 murders recorded. On the same day of this year, that number was 74. National Security Minister Marvin Dames has since said that he believes that not only murders are down, but also the fear of crime. And with young men regularly arraigned before the courts for violent crimes, Lightborn says she's looking to fill the youth centers being incorporated into the program with a specific age bracket. We're trying to target those persons between the ages of 15 and 29. And it's important for us to do that. And mind you, we're thinking about even younger people. But right now, we have so many persons between that age, those age ranges, where we're seeing crime and violence being, being committed. Those are the at-risk ages, aren't that they? That is the at-risk challenge ages, yes. Youth unemployment also remains a challenge, with statistics from May 2018 revealing a youth jobless rate of 24.1%. Compare that to the national unemployment rate of 10%. Lightborn says the program will eventually address that issue. This program is so multifaceted. One of the things, this is just component one. Component two actually addresses employment and employability. And that's the young people are here because of that. We have a contract with NTA. We're providing some training for them because we want them to be equipped to be employed or employable. But I think there's also that spirit of entrepreneurship we want to create. We want to build that confidence. We want to give them the skills that they need so that they could go out there and stand on their own. The Citizen Security Justice Program is funded through a loan from the Inter-American Development Bank and is being managed by the Ministry of National Security. Reporting for Our News, I'm Jared Higgs. All right, thanks a lot, Jared. Well, police are investigating the apparent drowning of an elderly man here in the capital yesterday. According to police, the man's body was discovered floating in waters at the eastern end of Goodman's Bay shortly after 10 Saturday morning. He was reportedly found wearing long black trousers and a black, white and yellow shirt. After his body was retrieved from waters, EMS personnel examined him and pronounced him dead. Police say foul play is not suspected at this time. However, he will undergo an autopsy to determine the exact cause of death. In other news this evening, Progressive Liberal Party Deputy Leader Chester Cooper says the government was outdone in negotiations surrounding the purchase of the Grand Lucayan Resort. He told our Kyle Joaquin that Bahamians will soon see just how bad of a deal it really was. The Grand Lucayan uh, purchase, we've emphatically say that the, the, the government was, was outdone in the negotiations. 
According to Cooper, the government will more than likely end up taking a huge loss whenever a buyer is identified and a deal is closed for the Grand Lucayan. The government purchased the Grand Lucayan for a full price of $65 million. This excludes the other costs like severance pay the government is now responsible for. I made the point that the severance payments, for example, for example ought to have been made by Hutchinson Wampoa, the vendor. The government is now stuck with paying the severance of the 200 or so employees who say, we want out. Just this past week, Finance Minister Peter Turnquist said there were some 10 potential buyers for the property, which has been shut since the passage of Hurricane Matthew in 2016. Cooper says whoever those potential buyers are, he's certain they won't be offering anywhere near what government is and will continue to spend. He said it's common sense. Now, the employees have no confidence in the transaction. Sun Wing pulled out of Grand Bahama. They had no confidence in the transaction. They had no confidence in the government. This is certainly the way it's being perceived by me. And therefore, this is going to be an uphill battle for the government to really get this hotel moving again. The Prime Minister has said government is not in the business of owning hotels and that his administration made the decision to purchase only to save jobs and to add some sort of aid to the ailing economy of Grand Bahama. They know nothing but running hotels and they would do well to engage an investment banking firm that understands uh, the space and the industry and get on with the sale of the hotel. Cooper said until he sees a deal finalized, he won't believe government's talk of potential buyers. Well, this government also said that they were going to sell Bahama when they uh, uh, became the government of the Bahamas. So now they're saying they have 10 buyers. Uh, they said they were going to find a legitimate buyer uh, for Bahama, we must not let them forget the nonsense that they, that they, that they threw out uh, during the campaign trail. They lambasted and demonized the Chinese, and now the Chinese are wonderful. So it's very important that we hear consistent messages from the government, so that when they say they have 10 buyers for the Grand Lucayan property, we can take it to the bank. But I am going to accept uh, that there's a transaction in the works when we see one actually happen. For our news, I'm Kyle Joaquin. Well, there is no real way to prepare for a storm. And for Delisa Ferguson, November 6, 2017 brought a tsunami of emotions when her husband, international gospel singer Japheth Lyrically Blessed Ferguson, succumbed to kidney failure. One year later, still reeling from the loss, Ferguson is embarking on a journey to keep the legacy he left alive. Here's our Jillian Gray. After five years of marriage and 13 years together, Delisa lost the love of her life, Bahamian gospel artist Japheth Lyrically Blessed Ferguson. Don't you cry for me, no, no. Don't shed a tear for me, no, no. Lyrically Blessed, best known for his unique songs and booming voice, died last November. Delisa has embarked on the journey of keeping his legacy alive by launching the JFAT Lyrically Blessed Ferguson Foundation. In efforts to keep his legacy alive, you know, I decided that this would be the best and the most effective way, you know, not only in keeping his legacy alive, but in also extending the impact of his ministry. I hope that people will be informed, inspired, and impacted by the works that will come from this organization. The foundation will focus on mentorship, outreach, and health awareness. Though the foundation, which will take place at Life Changers Ministries International this Tuesday, marks a new chapter for Delisa, it's also a time of remembrance. Tuesday, the 6th of November, will mark exactly one year since the passing of my husband. And afterwards, you know, I, I, I saw it only fit to have a service, a short service to commemorate that. JFAT's music has aired on stages both regionally and internationally. Here at home, he was nominated for an Icon Award and won the Marlin Award for Inspirational Song of the Year for his hit single, I'm Still Here. He said no matter what you're going through, I know it's rougher than it's ever been for you. My God said he wants you to know. 
Longtime friend of Lyrically Blast, Corey Roll, remembered the songbird as an authentic person. He was, he was different. He was one of the most authentic persons I've ever met in my entire life. And so um, as a best friend, he is, that's a void missing out of my life that is like almost can't be fulfilled, you know. But um, definitely what he represented was what he sung. Um, it's a lesson to every one of us who are alive. The foundation is going to be looking on mentoring folks who are interested in music, um, giving a backing, even those who are who are struggling even with their, their health-wise. Um, Delisha also shared, you know, uh, with the team that she'd like to provide financial assistance to those who need it, especially when it comes to treatment and the list goes on and on. So even if you yourself would like to be a mentor, like to be a part of the foundation, I would say to reach out to Delisa um, on Facebook, Delisa Ferguson. As JFF Ferguson took a keen interest in mentoring the next generation, his wife plans to include some of those mentees in the launch of the foundation. As she says, it's a way to ensure that legacy lives on. Reporting for Our News Weekend, I'm Jillian Gray. All right, thanks a lot, Jillian. Well, we will take our first break here, but still ahead tonight. BPL is still working on a plan on its utility scale renewables. Plus, one Bahamian company seeks to power parts of Grand Bahama. Those stories and more coming up when our news returns.